Multiple reports have recently suggested that cyber threats across different regions are impacting enterprises of all kinds. Alongside this trend, there is also a rise in expectations by customers for secure, trustworthy and reliable services. So where do telcos stand in terms of ensuring cybersecurity? And how can they help their customers protect their own operations? To find out, I'm now delighted to speak to John R. Ledge, Vice President of Product Management at Akamai. So to start things off, what are the main challenges that telcos are facing when it comes to securing their own operations? Well, thank you for having me. And I, I think like any other digital uh, business in today's day and age, uh, large telcos need to be thinking about all of the same things that other enterprises are thinking about. And I think of those in really two main categories. First is protecting their employees, uh, and second is protecting their infrastructure, both internal and external that they run their business operations on. So from an employee standpoint, of course, <clears throat> you know, the uh, acronym soup of secure web gateways, um, uh, multi-factor authentication, endpoint security, uh, micro segmentation, these are all layers of security that any digital business ought to be implementing to protect their employees. Uh, glo these are many, in many cases, global businesses, and uh, they're no longer working simply from their office location, but they're working from home, uh, working from coffee shops, uh, working from who knows where. So uh, protecting the employees as they're accessing uh, corporate information obviously is highly important. The second main aspect for any digital business is protecting their infrastructure, both internal and external. And there the uh, cyber threats are, are very broad. The attack surface is very large uh, as these assets are typically uh, exposed to the internet. So uh, application and API security is a hot area uh, that, uh, that our customers are, are aiming to protect as well as their uh, web assets uh, through web ap application firewalls or uh, fraud, uh, fraud protection uh, from the many attacks that try to uh, log in by stealing, stealing credentials and uh, logging into users' accounts and taking information in that manner. So I think those are the two big areas. My advice here for telecoms is really no different than it would be for a large bank or for an automotive company or any other uh, business doing, doing business uh, in the digital age online. How should telcos also protect their consumer and business customers from the myriad of cyber threats? Yeah, so, so this is an interesting divergence. You know, here uh, telcos and service providers more generally are uh, have have a third attack surface, which is their subscribers. So it's not just employees or their digital infrastructure, but their subscribers at the end of the, the infrastructure that they've built. This is how they make money. So uh, while large enterprises, I think, have lots of resources to be able to implement and deploy and manage uh, cybersecurity systems in layered uh, in a layered manner, like I just described. Um, small businesses and residential customers, which make up far greater number of subscribers uh, for these uh, telcos and and uh, infrastructure providers, they lack that cybersecurity expertise. In fact, I was just listening to an interview with um, the head of enterprise security at Vodafone who said, just in Europe, perhaps 30 million businesses don't have any cybersecurity expertise and 7 million of those don't have any cybersecurity system in place at all of any kind. So while he didn't say it, my assumption is that the vast majority of these are SMBs, small businesses that don't have an IT staff. They're just going about their business, uh, running the day-to-day -day operations. And the last thing on their mind is logging into security systems and maintaining those and setting those up. So, so this is really the opportunity for a service provider to step in and say, hey, we are your trusted IT vendor of choice, maybe the only IT vendor that a small business might have. 
and we can offer you uh, a high level of security that uh, requires almost no interaction on your part. Um, so, so when I think about what types of security are applicable or appropriate for residential customers or small businesses, it's not that long list of acronym soup I mentioned in, uh, in your first question. It's, it's much more about uh, a network-based security system that can be deployed by the carrier in their network and doesn't rely on the end user, the small business owner or a family head of household to deploy any software, to update it, to upgrade it, to maintain it, to respond to uh, threats and uh, notifications. Instead, it's just clean, safe internet. Just like you buy clean water from your water utility, uh, this is a way for uh, subscribers at the end of these vast networks to be secure without actually having to take any action on their own. How can telecoms network operators embrace cybersecurity to unlock more revenue potential? Yeah, this is the really good news part of the story here is that um, service providers can make money by doing the right thing. Uh, this is a is a need in the market. As I said, there's many, many unprotected small businesses and homes. Um, and in those cases, uh, we know that those categories of subscribers are willing to pay for security. They recognize their vulnerability. They recognize that they're not equipped to solve the problem. Therefore, they're willing to pay someone to take care of that for them. And specifically, no matter where I travel globally, and we have many customers around the world, um, the average uh, increase in revenue or the average uh, price premium a small business is willing to pay is about 20%. So whether you're in a low ARPU market or a high ARPU market, that percentage re stays relatively stable. 20% uh, more for secure broadband or mobile access than they would be willing to pay for just standard uh, unsecured internet access. And when it comes to residential subscribers, the numbers are lower, but they're still willing to pay. And we see about five to 15% revenue increase. So this is just a natural place, uh, as I said, for an ISP who touches millions and millions of subscribers globally to step in and fill that gap, fill that need for uh, security that, uh, that today is not being adequately met by the enterprise grade security systems targeted only at large enterprises. And what types of telcos are you working with and what do these partnerships involve? Well. Akamai is a global, a large global company, and we've been in the business of uh, securing not only um, digital businesses of all types, but in particular, uh, internet service providers and carriers uh, for many years. So as you'd expect, our customer base is extremely broad, both globally and domestically in the United States, and also it spans uh, tier one service providers. This is the bulk of our uh, customer base, but also a substantial number of tier two and tier three service providers focused on smaller niches. The big difference, I think, uh, between them is uh, tier one service providers like the uh, confidence of being able to install this security system uh, within their own data centers or their own private cloud while smaller operators <clears throat> don't have the expertise or the uh, operational expertise to uh, do that on a regular basis. And so they look to Akamai for its cloud and SaaS expertise. So luckily being in this business, as long as we have, uh, we offer all of those deployment models. Um, we do see that uh, whether you're a tier one or a tier two or tier three, all service providers are under pressure these days to increase revenue and find new channels of revenue as quickly as possible. 
Therefore, cloud-based deployments uh, with their faster time to deployment and faster time to revenue are being preferred these days as opposed to uh, several years ago when uh, the on-prem deployment was the preferred deployment model. So, so it's a really interesting time in the market where service providers are uh, recognizing this gap, recognizing this need, and the technology exists now to fill that need. And uh, they're stepping in and saying, hey, we can be the trusted, uh, trusted IT provider uh, to help protect all of the cybersecurity against all of the cybersecurity threats that uh, exist on the internet today. Indeed, these are very interesting insights in light of the surge in cyber attacks and the need for telcos to respond quickly and adapt. Thank you for joining us today, John. Thank you. Yeah.